Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Time for the battery and fuse compartment. The Ampro one held in with two uh, self tapping screws like this, which isn't that good. And the whole thing, including the tilting bale, just lifts off and we've got a crap Golden Power brand battery. I hate seeing Golden Power brand, it just cheapens it. Um, anyway, it's got a, um, a 315 milliamp fuse down in there, HRC. It's got a spare fuse here, which just sits in, which is a nice touch, but it doesn't have the um, amp uh, fuse actually available here. You have to take the meter apart to access that one. For the Uni T meter, it's got one self tapper here, which isn't that good, but at least it's only one of them. And you lift it off and watch this, okay? It sort of, well, it springs out like that, and the battery holder, it's a crap go light brand one, but I like it. The battery contacts are attached to the PCB and it um, sits in, the battery sits in this um, holder here, which is marked. You can actually put it in back to front. It You can actually physically force it in, but it is actually uh, labeled. So you've got to put them in the right way. It's got a nice sponge down there. And that's an excellent, excellent battery retention system. I love it. It's brilliant, but no fuse access at all. So thumbs down to that. Okay, let's check out the UEI one. A uh, one single self tapper down here. Uh, sorry, not a self tapper. It's a uh, metal threaded insert. So big thumbs up for that. And check it out. Very, very nice. Two huge HRC fuses, milliamps and amps, easily replaceable in there. And the battery compartment. It does come with an outline. It is quite hard to get the battery out of there. It is. Ugh. It is quite annoying. It comes with a standard um, sort of, you know, a nine volt battery snap like that, but it seems quite high quality and I give that one the thumbs up. Best one so far. And let's take a look at the X-Tech. It's got uh, two metal threaded inserts here, so thumbs up for that and a kind of convoluted sort of dicky sort of way to get it out. It sort of pops open like that, but they are metal threaded inserts and single energizer, 9 volts, so it comes with an energizer, standard battery snap, a bit of a rubber thing to hold it there in place, but no, so thumbs up for that, but no um, fuse access at all, so thumbs down for that. And the BK Precision has two uh, self tappers here and here, so that's not great. You come open, it comes with a Toshiba um, uh, alkaline there by the looks of it, but no fuse compartment access, um, a little bit of rubber to hold it in place, but yeah, that's not, you know, that's not that great. No, it doesn't even come with an alkaline, look at that, heavy duty. Nah, thumbs down. Now, let's try the ideal meter. The first thing you notice is that you can't access the battery compartment without taking off the holster. There it is under there. You can see the holster, but you know, you can see the battery compartment. You can't get to it. So I've got to take the, it's a very nice looking holster, but you try and take it off and you've got to take it off from the bottom. You can't get it from the top and it's really, ugh, I'm struggling here. This is <laughs> not easy at all, but <laughs> there it is. There's it all in its naked sort of form. It still looks quite neat with its full um, yellow body, but let's um, open up that battery compartment and take a look. That feels like a self, a, um, sorry, a threaded, but this is really dicky to get open. I don't like that at all, but yes, it's a metal uh, threaded insert, and once again, it's got the, uh, comes with a heavy duty battery. I don't like one of those non name brand. It's sort of quite hard to get that out, but they are soldered, the battery terminal is soldered directly onto the board, which is really nice. So I kind of, I kind of like it in that respect, but there's no fuse compartment access at all, so, you know, it only gets a thumb sideways. Now for the input probes, uh, this is the Uni T meter, and as you'd expect, because it's a, you know, it's a cheap um, brand, the probes, the cables are not rated at all. There's no uh, ratings on the probes and you know they're supposedly if you believe it cat 3000 volts stamped on there but eh, anyway um, I don't like how they're right angled like this so when you plug them into the meter 
like that. They sort of stick out like that. I don't really like that. That's real duh, yuck. And for the Amprobe, um, as you can see, as you'd expect from a company like um, Amprobe, the cables themselves are actually rated. They're very good quality probes. They're reasonably sharp. You get a good sense of uh, confidence and safety in their standard right angle and they plug in reasonably well into the volts and the ohms but as I said when I opened it the milliamps and microamps because the jacks are split they're very soft it's it's almost it's almost loose and jiggly in there so I've got to give that I mean that the probes are excellent but I've got to give the amp probe the thumbs down whoop there it is thumbs down for the amp input jacks I just don't like them at all they're very loose and the BK Precision ones, as you'd expect, are good brands, so fully um, input rated, CAT 3000 volts, quite sharp, really nice moulded rubber, very high quality. Once again, they've got sort of a not a right angle on there at all, but um, as you can see there, a CAT 310 amp, you know, really good quality probes. I, I really like them, and they plug in, plug in really sharply, very tight. Um, and the milliamps and microamps are a little bit um, slightly looser than the uh, volt ohms, but really nice probes. Thumbs up. And these are the UEI probes. Quite a different construction. Um, very big finger guards on there. Um, nice sharp little probes like that, but um, really a you know, very stiff, um, top quality probe on it. The cables are not rated but i would trust uei ones they don't actually have to be stamped on there to be rated but um because the fluke ones aren't for example but you can just trust that the fluke ones are high quality and the um input jacks are really nice and nice and solid they really sit in there just beautifully i reckon a big thumbs up to the uei probes and here's the xtech probes as you can as you'd expect uh top brand top quality probes really nice very sharp, very long probes on them. Real, um, they're Cat4, uh, Cat4 600 volt uh, rated, and they've got really tight input jacks on them. As you can see, they're quite unusual. They've got these ridges. I'm not sure if that's designed to help with the water proofing or not, perhaps, but that, that makes them really tight to actually push in. You've almost got to push down on them like that, and um, it's, you know, they're really, really quite stiff but once they're in there wow they're really stuck in there I really like them thumbs up now let's test the auto range speed of the X-Tech yeah pretty darn quick range speed UEI yeah not too bad slightly slower than the X-Tech but still pretty good speed uni T oh slow as a wet week that took forever terrible thumbs down BK precision Oh, lightning quick, fastest so far, awesome. The ideal meter. Oh, slow as a wet week again. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Thumbs down. Okay, let's try the Ampro. Wow, that is lightning, lightning quick. Let's watch that again. That's got to be the fastest of the group with the BK Precision. And let's test the all-important speed of the continuity tester, Ampro. Here we go. Oh. Terrible. Oh, dog slow. Awful. Thumbs down. The ideal meter. Not a bit faster than the Ampro, but still pretty terrible. Okay, BK Precision. BK Precision. Oh, beautiful. Oh, sex on a stick. Listen to that. And it's latched too. Oh, stuff of wet dreams, really. Nah. Nah, slow. Probably on par with the ideal. Thumbs down. The UEI meter. Oh, it's scratchy. It's not, not entirely latched. But fairly instant. So, yeah, it's one of those unlatched things. And finally, the X-Tech. Yeah, pretty quick. It's quite soft, but um, not quite as well latched as the BK Precision. The BK Precision was the clear winner, but X-Tech would come a clear second. Okay, now let's test some of the backlights. The uh, Amprobe 
One has a very nice sort of blue um, tinge to it. Shows up different on camera, I think, than it. it's much more bluer on here, so that's not too bad. The ideal one here has a um, has a sort of a weird background on it, sort of patchy. You can see it on camera there, I think, but it's sort of a white um, background and it is quite quite a patchy sort of thing. It turns off pretty quick, as you can see, the Ampro one didn't. Um, now the X-Tech is very um, strange, I, very unusual. It's got a very nice, even bright backlight, but it fades down. It Once you hit it, it goes on full brightness and then it's got a PWM driver that it slowly fades down and you can't switch it off. You can just restart it. You, if you hold it down, you can't switch the damn thing back off. So you just, the only option you've got is to push it, comes on full, and then f fades down straight away. I don't know, it's a bit of a wank feature. Someone at X-Tech was having a wank when they, oh, I'll do a, you know, a PWM option or something like that. That'll look really nice. Now the BK Precision, a rather nice looking uh, green backlight there. You can switch it on and off. Nice, I like it. And the uh, UEI one, as you can see, it's got a pretty dim sort of, not not that great um, side lit one. It's not very even at all, but you know it does the job. That's probably the worst out of the bunch, I'd say. And the Uni T one is uh, quite a nice even white um, backlight on it. I really kind of like it. It's nice. Okay, let's test the capacitance range of each each unit. I've got a uh, reference cap here, and we're looking for a hundred point three six nanofarads that's on the um, Agilent LCR meter here now let's try them out let's get the uh, uni t uh, the UEI one sorry let's uh, rel that out oh. go to relative mode plug it in and takes a bit of time 100.9 okay let's check out the basic uh, capacitance range in comparison I've got a um, a reference Agilent um, LCR meter here, very expensive one, and I'm measuring a reference cap here, and I've got a hundred point, let's say a hundred point four nanofarads. Now let's test out the individual meters. Let's get the UEI one here. So we're looking for a hundred point four. It's taken a while to auto range, but hundred point nine. That's not too bad. Uh, it doesn't range switch at all. So let's get the ideal one. Uh, let's look, look Look at this. It's got one nanofarad um, uh, value. We've got to uh, rel that one out and 100.5. Pretty close. And it was pretty quick to auto range too. Let's um, look at the amp probe. The amp probe's only manual ranging, so we'll put it down to four nanofarads down there. We'll uh, relative that out. Oh, this doesn't have a relative feature. Urgh, thumbs down. You can't rel it out. Unbelievable. Anyway, let's try it out. Oh, sorry, wrong jack. Let's try it over here. It slowly gets up there, 0.104. As you can see, it just doesn't have the range to do it. Um, you don't, you lose an extra digit there because its lowest range is four microfarads. So really, I don't like the AMP probe at all. It's crap. Now let's um, give the X-Tech a go, shall we? Let's. Um, Relative that one out and give it a go. 101, so that's the furthest out uh, so far. But um, still still way, well within spec, no problems at all. Um, and let's try the uh, Uni T one. Let's give it a go, 100 point, whoop. That's got um, nine nanofarads, check it out. That's the residual capacitance in there and you've got a relative that one out too. So that's that's just crazy. Nine nanofarads, God. 100.2. No problems at all. Okay, let's try the BK Precision, which I really love because you can get to the capacitance range without pushing any mode buttons or things like that. And its residual capacitance is quite low and its lowest range is only, um, its lowest range is one nanofarad. So it's got one picofarad resolution. And oops, wrong jack there. Let's plug it in and 100.1. It's really quite nice. And it's the only meter in the bunch that allows you to uh, range switch. And it actually goes, it allows you to manual range. It goes up to 10 millifarads or actually 60 millifarads. Excellent. Thumbs up.
Okay, let's measure a very large value cap. I've got a 2200, uh, 2200 microfarad nominal um, cap here, and as you can see, the Agilent is reading about uh, 1.91 millifarads. The ideal meter finally got there, but it displayed nothing for like 10 or 15 seconds. Um, it eventually is measuring something, but it gave you no indication at all that it was measuring a high value cap. Now let's measure the uh, same thing with the BK Precision and oh, discharging. It's got an auto discharge function. Check it out. Really very nice. So that could actually take some time. I assume it's discharging and then it will eventually measure. Yep, here it comes. It's ramping up and it, and it shows you it actually range switching and there it is. It can measure the cap. No problem. This thing has by far the best capacitance range and the X-Tech of course doesn't work because its maximum uh, highest capacitance range is only 100 microfarads and likewise the UEI maximum range only 100 microfarads so it just overloads okay let's try the Amprobe it's manual ranging of course it can go up to 4000 microfarads so you'd expect it to be able to measure it let's try it it slowly ramps up so yeah it's getting there that's not too bad at all Okay, let's try the Uni T and see what it can do. Once again, you plug it in and you get no indication whatsoever of it actually doing anything, ranging, charging up, discharging the cap, whatever. You just get nothing. And after about 20 seconds, it finally makes it right up there and actually displays something. Okay, let's try the diode test range. I've got a standard silicon Diode, uh, Fluke 875 reference point, 594 volts is what we're looking for. And let's see if any of these meters can measure a white LED. I've got a bunch of star LEDs here, 3 volt white ones. And as you can see, I've got the Fluke 85 reference and it lights up the LED and I'm able to read the voltage at the nominal test current. So let's see if the others can match the Fluke. And the BK Precision, it can light up the LED, no problems at all, but it can't actually measure it. But hey, at least it can light it up, so thumbs up. Check out the UEI meter, and no, it can't, uh, it can't even light up the LED and can't display anything, so thumbs down. Give the Amprobe a go, see what it can do. Yeah, it just lights up the uh, LED, but it can't measure it, so at least it gets a partial thumbs up. The Uni T meter. Yeah, it lights up the LED, but there's no reading at all. Ideal meter, it lights up the LED, no problems, but once again, no reading. And last of all, the X-Tech, no, it can't even light up the LED, and it reads nothing, of course, so thumbs down. And the UEI is a big loser, can't even measure it, can't even uh, light it up, hopeless. And the X-Tech is equally hopeless, so both of those meters, thumbs down. And at least the silly things can measure a silicon diode. And let's try 240 volts on the ohms range. Whoop, <laughs> battery indicator come on. It's doing all sorts of weird stuff like that. Let's go around to, whoa, look at that. Check it out. Diode test range, hertz. Will it measure 50 hertz? Yeah, it does. Um, so there you go. Let's try the capacitance range. It's doing all sorts of weird and wonderful things and there you go let's switch it back see if it recovers yeah no problems at all Ampro passes 240 volts on the ideal meter let's check it out switch it to the ohms range it's going burko but it's still surviving there you go let's whoop doesn't like that at all switch in the capacitance range and let's take it back. It takes a bit to get back, but it has recovered. No problems at all. Mains on the UEI meter. Let's switch it around to ohms. No problems at all. Hertz, 50 hertz, not a problem. Cap, seems to handle that. Not an issue at all. Switch it back and, yep, thumbs up. And the BK Precision, 
measures it, no problems. Ohms range, whoop, yep, all the displays all light up. It's doing weird, sort of some weird and wonderful stuff. Whoa, it doesn't like it on diode. Um, on continuity mode at all. Cap. And has it recovered? No problems at all. Okay, let's try the X-Tech. The silly thing about the X-Tech is that you have to actually uh, press the mode button because the AC and DC volts is on the same volt position. So to go between AC and DC, you've got to hit mode and that, that, that really sucks. Let's switch it around to cap and it looks like it's frozen to display. Battery lights come up. No, it just doesn't, doesn't like that at all. And let's switch it back. And it looks like it's frozen. I think it's frozen. Let's switch it off. Yeah, something's happened. The X-Tech has frozen on mains. Look, I can't recover that at all. It's not data hold. Ah, oh, what a heap of shit. The backlight still works. Something has happened to the X-Tech. I don't like it at all. Let's see, let's switch it off and um, see if we can reset it. And yep, it reset, but 240 volts on the, uh, on the uh, ohms range, it looks like it, it just locked it up. Let's try it again. Switch it on. Yeah, it's recovered, it's come back, but watch, let's, let's try it again. There it is. Whoop, whoop. No, yeah, no, it's measured it. See, it was, it was working, it seems to be working fine now, but it certainly didn't before. It didn't like that at all, not one bit. There you go, weird. Okay, let's try it again. We've got the, we've reset it, and uh, there you go. It's measuring AC, no problems at all, but um, let's switch it over to there. Well, all the digit, oh, no, it's not a happy little camper. Mode, no, it can't, can't do anything, no. And you switch back to the volts, and it's totally locked up and beeping and doing all sorts of weird stuff. Oh, I don't know. That's got to be a thumbs down, surely. And I've totally disconnected it, and the stupid thing is still beeping at me continuously. Just totally locked up. Ah, oh, don't like it at all. Piece of shit. The Uni T, it's measuring 240, no problem. Let's switch it to DC volts, millivolts, and ohms. Seems to be handling it, no problems. Diode. Well, continuity, capacitance, frequency, yeah, no problems at all. Yep, excellent. Okay, let's try the 1000 volt high voltage test. I've got my Keithley high voltage power supply. I've trimmed it to 1000 volts, oh, there we go. So we've got the Fluke 87 as a reference, 1000 volts DC. Let's try all the meters out and see how they stack up. The Ampro reads spot on, 1000 volts, no problems. The BK Precision reads 1004, not a problem. The Ideal Meter's obviously got a uh, high voltage input alert, but it's 1001 volts. Oh, the X-Tech is way out, 951 volts, what's going on? Now thankfully I've got a backup meter which X-Tech sent me, and it reads 998, so there you go. What the hell's going on there? The UNI-T, high voltage uh, input alert, it's beeping, but 1,001 volts. Now something's happening with the UEI here. When I actually plug it in, watch, the display actually switches off for a second. So I don't know what's going on there, but it reads spot on. Okay, let's test all the other DC volt ranges. We've got the Fluke 87 5 reference up here. I've got 300 volts, fed the same voltage into all the meters, so 300.6 is our reference. And as you can see, the others are all uh, pretty darn close, all within spec. Let's ramp it down to test the 40 volt range. Uh, we've got 30.93 on the Fluke, and all the others are pretty darn close, well within spec. And let's test the 4 volt range. We've got 3.92 volts on the Fluke, and all the others are pretty darn close. The X-Tech is out on that range a fair bit, but um, the others aren't too bad at all. And let's try the uh, 330 millivolt range, 300 and, uh, 335 millivolts, 335, and they're all pretty darn close to within spec, no problems at all. Uh, the BK Precision, it looks like it hasn't ranged 
down, so we'll take that into the manual range. There we go. Excellent. And let's try and do a simple overshoot test. They're all reading about 3 volts, and we'll switch that off, and we'll switch it on and see how if any of them overshoot. Uh, the X-Tech... The X-Tech doesn't overshoot, it ramps up okay. The Amprobe switches straight to it, no problems. The UEI takes time to ramp up, but it's uh, it doesn't overshoot. The Ideal overshoots a little bit, I think it was about 0.3 there. So yeah, uh, just a little bit. Let's try that again. Yeah, it overshoots just a tad. The uh, Uni T, let's check out the Uni T, and yeah, the Uni T overshoots, it goes to, it overshoots there to 4 volts and then comes back down, and the BK Precision, spot on, instant. So it looks like the um, BK Precision and the Amprobe are the best in that respect. Now one of the interesting features of the Uni T meter is that it's got volts and millivolts DC ranges. Now if you go to the millivolt range, by the way it does millivolts on here, um, on the volts range it'll auto range to millivolts, but it has a high impedance millivolt range, but it goes down to, check it out, it goes down to um, 60 millivolts full scale. So you get um, uh, 10 microvolts resolution. Excellent. Let's have a quick look at the manuals. The BK Precision one, tiny little thing like this. It's, um, you know, it's all in English, but um, it's got no diagrams. It's got the specs, so it's got all the basic stuff, but no operational diagrams. Very brief. Eh, not impressed at all. The ideal one is this fold-out thing, which I don't like. I don't like these fold-out formats, but um, it's got everything. It's got the, you know, it's got operational, yeah, operational diagrams. It's got the full... Um, specs and you know it, it does the job but I don't like the format. Um, the Amprobe one, a neat little uh, booklet but really tiny, it's got an addendum there which um, shows that they care um, but you know it's, it's not bad, it's real tiny uh, print and um, but there's no operational diagrams at all but all the specs are there so you know it's not too bad. The Unity, nice little uh, booklet, it's actually got a real book um, with you know nice coating on the front and and it's all uh, it's all in English which is really quite neat it's got operational uh, diagrams galore but it's the same book for all the different models for there's five models in the 60 series the A B C D and E it's nuts they've got a model for everything um, but yeah that's it's pretty darn good um, the UEI one is quite uh, large and um, it's Excellent, it's got the full specs, it's got all the operational uh, diagrams, and I give that one a big thumbs up. And the Xtech uh, one is a nice big format like this, and uh, it's two languages, Spanish and English I think, but it's got the full specs, um, it's got some operational uh, diagrams, and that's pretty good too. And let's just do a basic check on one of the resistance ranges, uh, the reference fluke 3.293k, so that's what we're shooting for. Pretty slow to get there, terrible. 3.293, spot on. Takes forever to get there, clunk, clunk, clunk. 3. Point... Ugh, it's way out. 3. Point... Ugh, what's going on with the damn X Tech? Hopeless. Let's get the good X Tech, well, the one that they sent me. Clunk, clunk, takes forever to get there. 3.288, so that's better. So there's something seriously wrong with uh, this fluke, which I've, uh, which which is the first one I've got. So yeah, I'm not sure. That's um. And the ideal. 5.294, yep, spot on. Three point two nine oh, near enough. The UEI, three point two nine four. 
And the amp probe's a bit out at 3.3, but still within spec. And let's measure the battery consumption of the XTEC. I've got the Fluke 87 5 set up here to measure the input voltage. It's coming from an external power supply. Um, I've got the MetroHit Extra here measuring the battery current. And let's wind the wick down to see where the low voltage icon comes on. There we go. It comes on at about 736 Volts. That's not very good. That's only that's you know 1.2 volts or more per cell. So it doesn't go down that uh, low. I'm not terribly impressed by that. The amp probe takes around three milliamps, as you can see. And let's wind down the voltage to see where the low battery icon comes on. There we go. It comes on at about. Comes on at about 7.1 volts, so it's better than the X-Tech slightly, but still not very impressive. The BK Precision is about 2.9 milliamps at 9 volts, and let's wind the wick down and see where it drops out. There you go, it drops out at about uh, 6.8 volts, which is much better than the other two. The Uni-T has the lowest consumption so far, 2 milliamps at 9 volts. And we'll wind the wick down and see where it comes on at. But it's got the worst lowest voltage, 7.5 volts. There you go. Check out the UEI. It's down to 3.4 volts input voltage and it's still working and it's still not showing a low voltage uh, indicator. You've got to be kidding me. Low battery. Let's turn it down a bit more. There we go, it started, it just came on right then at 3.1 volts. Unbelievable. What brilliant, brilliant design. That is using virtually every last drop of that 9 volt battery. Huge, big thumbs up. I like it. And check it out, I just had to make sure it's still within spec. This is the same resistor I was measuring before. There we go, it's still within spec, it's still spot on, and it's only 3.2 volts battery voltage. Incredibly good design. I love it. Last and certainly least, the ideal meter. 5.5 milliamps. God, you could fly to the moon on 5.5 milliamps. That's incredible. At 9 volts. That, that is a battery hog. Now let's... And, and it's low battery at about 7 volts, but that's a loser, really, that's the worst out of the bunch. And let's just do a quick uh, temperature measurement, I've got the Fluke reference one here, 14.4 degrees Celsius, uh, I've just got another El Cheapo thermometer here, 14.9, and the x doing 15.4, which isn't too bad at all. And it comes with um, this little thermocouple adapter which is um you know it's reasonable but it just accepts a standard k-type so it's not too bad at all the good thing about the x-tech is it does actually give you um a 0.1 degree resolution which is excellent not all meters will actually do that the ampro one's not bad it comes with a very nice k-type uh, thermocouple adapter and just a el cheapo thermocouple uh, pro, but as you can see, um, it's a bit out because it's only got one degree C resolution. Um, that's not, but it's it's within spec because its spec is um, you know a plus minus a couple of degrees um, Celsius, let alone a plus you know, a couple of counts. So, yeah, it's just they're not that great if you want to measure accurate room temperature. The ideal meter uh, reads just the ambient um, temperature with nothing actually plugged in. So there it is, 14 degrees. It's not um, doesn't have a high resolution. It comes with one of these immersion type uh, ad adapters, but um, so you plug it in and um, yeah, it just goes all over the shop. So I don't know. It's just one of those crap things. Uni T can't actually measure temperature, but it comes with this rather groovy uh, K type. Adapter not only is it a k-type, but it it looks like it's a, it's like a transistor tester plug-in as well There's an RC plug-in and some pads here basic meter collector some surface mount transistors. It's really quite Check it out. See if you can there we go Look at that. It's really quite neat But I have no idea because it doesn't come with a k-type thermocouple and this can't measure temperature 
So it's just completely whacked. Let's measure some current and see what we get. I've got my constant current generator set for 350 microamps. It's pretty close, uh, 349.8 microamps. So let's check them out. The ideal, uh, 349.6, spot on. The ideal's out, it's 346.8. What's going on there? And this is the good one. This isn't the uh, crap X-Tech either, so beats me. I think that's still just within spec though, because it's spec is like one point something percent on uh, current, so it's just in, but still, you know, it's, I expect it a bit better. The Amprobe for 349.7, no problems at all. The UEI 349.8, not a problem. BK Precision 348.8, bit on the bit lower than the others, but still way within spec. And the Uni T 350.1, so they're all not too bad. The Xtech was by far the worst um, out there, but still, still within spec. Let's try that one more time on the milliamp range. Constant current generator, 3.5, pretty close to 3.5 milliamps. Let's check out all the meters. And the ideal, uh, 3.5, uh, 3,500 microamps and 3.5 milliamps, spot on. The BK Precision, pretty close to spot on and turn it to milliamps, 3.48 milliamps, no problems. The X-Tech's closer to spot on this time with the uh, microamp range, let's turn to the milliamp range, 3.44, it's reading reading a tad on the low side but still within spec. Uni-T, 3,482 and milliamp range, 3.49, pretty close to spot on. The Amprobe, 3502, no problems at all. Milliamp range, that sickly sound when you change it, 3.48. UEI 3498 on microamps and 3.47 on milliamps, no problems at all. And and just for comparison, this is the other X-Tech meter, so it's pretty darn close. This is the one with the bodgy link in it. Now there's one thing with the UEI uh, display, you can actually um, press it in. You can't, um, it does bend, it's hard to see, but you can actually press the uh, plastic in there. It doesn't affect the display at all, but yeah, it's not as uh, rigid as say the um, X-Tech, which is, you know, feels like a rock. It's absolutely, um, you know, fantastic. And uh, the Uni-T one is pretty solid. The B uh, the BK Precision is probably the second least protected, maybe, but um, yeah, the ideal one's um, pretty good, but you can press the, um, seg press the display and see the segments um, come up, but that's not uncommon, so there you go. And let's measure the shunt resistance. Now, I'm using the Fluke 87 here to measure the shunt resistance of our Metro -Hit, Gossen MetroHit reference meter here, because this is pretty much the best meter I have when it comes to that sort of thing. And the Gossen probes are really good. I can just plug them straight in like that because they've got the uh, banana plug terminal. It's really quite neat. Okay, here we go. I've got it set to microamps range, and we're measuring about 101 uh, ohms, or, or 100 ohms, basically. So that is that will be our reference value for the microamps range, and we'll see how the others compare. On the milliamp range, I've got, well, basically an ohm, because I haven't zeroed out the test lead. So um, on the milliamps range, 1 ohm. On the microamps range, uh, 100 ohms and we won't worry about the amps range because all the meters are going to be very low on the amps range. And here's the Amprobe one, no surprise because the Amprobe 37XR is famously horrible in this regard, it's one of the worst in the industry. We've got 500 ohms for microamps and milliamps we've got 7 ohms so eh, thumbs down, that's about as worse as it's going to get I'm sure. And the ideal meter, check it out, it's only 50 ohms, it's half what you get on the Gossen Metrowatt and the Fluke. Excellent! And we'll try the milliamp range, that knob is hard to turn, and 1.35 ohms, so that's pretty darn, pretty darn good. I like it. And the UEI, no problems at all, 100 ohms on the microamp range, and the milliamp range, we've got 1.6 ohms, so that gets a thumbs up. And the Uni-T, surprisingly excellent, 50 ohms on the microamps range. Fantastic. 
and the milliamps range 0.83 clear winner I love it the uni T who would have thought there you go absolute winner and the BK Precision very disappointed terrible 500 ohms on the microamps range shocking and the milliamps range well wow, six just as bad as the amp probe thumbs down and finally the X-Tech no problems at all 100 ohms on microamps all the ranges are the same and milliamps we're looking at 2.3 a bit on the high side but that gets a thumbs up excellent now all of the meters are made in China except for the BK Precision which is made in Taiwan and the UEI which is made in Korea of all places so there you go and we'll do a quick spot check to test the uh, true RMS converter now I've got my reference Fluke 87 here what I'm doing is I'm feeding in a 300 Hertz um, triangle wave it's not a sine wave triangle wave and um, let's check it out we've got the BK precision here and as you can see it's a one volt uh, RMS amplitude it's pretty close to spot on at 300 Hertz now let's increase that to 3 kilohertz and as you can see the BK precision is starts to drop a little bit but the fluke doesn't kiss and now we're up to 30 kilohertz and as you can see the fluke's still reading but the B BK precision has dropped right down the same thing with the UEI but the only issue with the UEI is this is not true RMS so as you can see I've got it back down to 300 uh, Hertz and um, really the um, the uh, UEI doesn't um, match the flute because it's not true RMS whereas if, if we put it to a, a sine wave for example there we go it's a sine wave now and as you can see it's spot on but when you do it to a that's a square wave and that's the triangle wave as you can see it's out because it's not true RMS but you can get a true RMS version of this meter for like 15 or 20 dollars more so if you do need the true RMS capability which I do recommend um, you should probably spring for the extra on that and the X-Tech at 300 Hertz is spot on let's take it up to 3 kilohertz it's down a bit and at 30 kilohertz it's way down and the ideal as you can see at 300 Hertz no problem let's turn it up to 3 kilohertz it's down a fair bit and at 30 kilohertz of course it's just pointless the amp probe no problems at 300 Hertz 3 kilohertz no problems at all and, and at 30 kilohertz it's about half and the uni T at 300 Hertz no problems at all let's take it up to 3 kilohertz spot on again UT is looking good and it, at 30 kilohertz check it out it's still there unbelievable and sure enough there it is 30 kilohertz and it's still spot on and the amazing thing is it's only supposed to have a bandwidth of 3 kilohertz so unbelievable and we'll do a quick spot frequency check as well roughly 1 megahertz going in and as you can see the uh, BK precision is spot on as is the ideal meter no problems at all and the UEI no problems the amp probe no problems and the uni T no problems at all as you'd expect they all work on frequency and just as another quick check for low amplitude signals on frequency I'm feeding about 7 70 millivolts um, into the metro hit and it can't measure the frequency at all it's a one megahertz signal same as before but the uni t can check it out let's see if any of the others can match that no the bk precision can't no the amp probe can't the x tech can't the uei can't but the ideal can there you go the two cheapest meters in the group have the best performance on uh, amplitude versus frequency 49.9% on the ideal 49.9% on the X-Tech the amp probes a little bit out there check it out 50.3% uni T 49.9% and the BK precision unfortunately can't measure duty cycle at all okay we'll do a quick drop test from the bench onto concrete it's about a meter and let's see if they survive the X-Tech's drop proof to three meters so I'm sure it's going to survive easy let's give it a go no problems at all 
Now for the UEI meter. No problems at all. The BK Precision, I rate this one the most vulnerable or fragile out of the group. So let's try it. God help it. No problems at all. And the ideal feels pretty rugged too, so I'm sure it'll survive. Let's give it a go. Whoa. Smack on its face. No problems at all. And the cheap Uni T. Let's see what it's capable of. No problems at all. And last of all, the Ampro. Nice big rubber holster on it. Should survive, no problems. Yep, absolutely. Let's just do one more drop test. I'll drop them directly down, vertical, so they land straight on their bottom, one meter under concrete. Let's give it a go. This is the Ampro. It bounces and it survives, no problem. The UEI meter. Whoa. Yep, no problems. The BK Precision. Whoa. Yep, it survived, no problems. The Uni T. Whoa, it bounces, no problems at all. The Ideal. Yep, no problems. And lastly, the Ampro. Yeah, excellent. Bounces real good.